the war elephant. For centuries, one of the most fearsome weapons on the battlefield, used by most cultures from ancient China in the east to ancient Carthage in the west. It was used effectively in many conflicts and battles. And today we'll be exploring their strengths, weaknesses and their ancient history. The elephant is believed to have been first tamed by the very ancient Indus River Valley civilization around the second millennia BC, 4000 years ago. Over the centuries, the tradition of catching and trading wild elephants spread all over Southeast Asia, as far as ancient China. While taming an elephant was no easy feat, breeding elephants was much less efficient as it took many years for an elephant to mature and as such, humans focused on taming. Taming elephants became an art and there were entire family lines dedicated to this activity. The elephant trainers were called mahouts. Elephants would have likely been used extensively in logistics, religion and agricultural work before warfare, but by the 6th century BC there is ample evidence for the widespread use of these formidable creatures on the battlefields of India. This tradition spread much slower to the west as the African forest elephants were smaller and more difficult to tame. Adding to this, the Mesopotamian elephant populations were extinct by 500 BC. The ancient Indian epics Ramayana and Mahabharata, dating from the 5th to 4th centuries BC, elaborately depict elephant warfare. In India, the elephant was considered as an essential component of the military amongst the chariot, infantry and cavalry. Chariots eventually fell into disuse, but the elephant remained as the warrior's mount of choice. The elephant corps of the Nanda Empire during Alexander's campaign are said to have had anywhere between 3,000 and 6,000 war elephants. The Indian elephants are quite large, going up to 3.5 meters at the shoulder. These would be armored on their trunks and torso, their tusks equipped with blades or iron spikes. Some would carry a tower on their backs that could carry up to four skirmishers. With all their equipment, these large elephants were quite terrifying. As the Akhamedid Empire conquered the Indus River peoples during the late 6th to early 5th century BC, they started using war elephants in their armies. These animals were gifts from the Indian satraps that came accompanied with their mahouts and as such were in quite small numbers. In 331 BC, at the Battle of Gaugamela, the Persians had 15 Indian trained war elephants and even though the Persians couldn't deploy the magnificent beasts, they made such an impression on the Macedonian troops that Alexander felt the need to sacrifice to the god of fear the night before the battle. Alexander then took the elephants and incorporated them into his army. After Alexander's death, his successors continued this practice, where elephants then spread into Bactria, Egypt and as far as Greece. In 280 BC, Pyrrhus of Epirus invaded Italy with 20 war elephants, using them against both the Romans and Carthaginians. The latter went on to use elephants extensively in their armies. At its height, Carthage had an impressive 300 war elephants on their stables. We usually don't think of the Romans as elephant users, however the Romans used elephants gained in the Second Punic War in their wars against Macedon, the Seleucids, the Celtiberians, the Carthaginians and the Gauls. In the battles of Sinocephale of 197 BC and Pydna of 168 BC between the Romans and Macedon, the role of the elephants has been quite severely underestimated. The honor of achieving victory is usually ascribed to the superiority of mobile Roman legions over an inert Macedonian phalanx. Yet it is forgotten that none other than the elephants gained the Romans victory on the flanks on both battles. The Romans eventually stopped using elephants altogether and by the late 1st century BC they seem to have disappeared from the Roman armies completely. Roman and Carthaginian elephant corps were, for the most part, African forest elephants. These would be shorter than their Indian cousins, reaching a maximum of 2.4 meters at the shoulder. While still quite scary, the animals themselves would fear their larger brethren, rendering them unusable against the Indian elephants. And while they'd also wear armor, they'd often not carry towers. African savanna elephants were used in war, albeit to a very limited extent since they're even more difficult to tame than their forest cousins. 
Parthia saw limited use of elephants in its armies, but the Sassanids who seceded them made extensive use of Indian war elephants. The war elephants would often be deployed in mass on the flanks, that's how the Romans did it. The successors and Indians would have used them spread out in the front lines, and over the ancient world they were used to varying degrees of effectiveness. In China, for example, they didn't see much success. Several tactics were employed by all those who had to face elephants in battle, which rendered the deployment of this weapon situational, and it couldn't always be deployed. It is of note how the Romans beat the Carthaginian elephants at Sama. They opened corridors for the elephants to run through and hurl javelins at them. At the Battle of the Hedaspes River, Alexander had his troops do something quite similar. A common tactic was also to scare the elephants, they are afraid of fire and loud noises. And this was a great way to have them turn around and trample their own men. Elephants were a double-edged sword. One of the more gruesome anti-elephant measures was the war pig. Historical accounts of incendiary pigs or flaming pigs were recorded by the military writer Polyanus and by Aelian. Both writers reported that the siege of Megara in 266 BC was broken when the Megarians doused some pigs with combustible pitch, crude oil or resin, set them alight and drove them towards the enemy's masked war elephants. The elephants bolted in terror from the flaming squealing pigs, often killing great numbers of their own soldiers by trampling them to death. After the elephant fell in disuse by the Romans, it disappeared from the western arsenal. However, it remained prominent in India throughout the ages. Well, did you enjoy this essay on the war elephant in ancient warfare? If you did, maybe you'd like to also know more about the war horses of the ancient world, or perhaps these other topics on your screen right now. Well, thanks for watching, say wonderful, wolf out.